Hey everyone, I hope you're having a nice day. In this video, I'll be giving some spiritual applications to racism. So before I start, I'm going to read James 2, 8, and 9. If you are fulfilling the royal law according to scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show prejudice, you're committing a sin and are convicted by the law as offenders. So as I go over these groups that were historically discriminated, I hope you keep an open mind and learn something. The first group I will be talking about is the Native Americans. As we know, even before the European settlers came to America, there were already cultures living there, the Native Americans. And as time passed by, the American government gradually but surely began to take all the land of the natives. Here is a video by Emperor Tiger Star showing just how much land the Native Americans lost ever since the Americans came. So the blue land is the American territory, and all the other colors are ones that Native Americans owned. So yeah, as you can see, the Native Americans went from almost occupying all of America to owning almost no land. And as we'll come to see, most of that land was unfairly taken from Here them. are some instances when America took land from the Natives. When America was just a group of colonies, um, the British Empire came up with an agreement with the natives. Uh, this agreement was called the Proclamation of 1763. So there were three parts to this agreement. The first part was that there would be peace, so they wouldn't fight each other. Two, they would trade with each other. And three, the port part, was that the settlers wouldn't settle past to the west of the Appalachian Mountains. So this means that the area west of the Appalachian Mountains would be reserved for the natives. However, the colonists didn't like this, and they a lot of them ended up um, settling there anyways. They went against it. And after the Revolutionary War, when America became its own independent country, um, they decided to um, do away with this agreement and move there anyways. So that's how the natives lost that section of land. During the Louisiana Purchase on 1803, America bought 800 million square miles of land from France and through this purchase America was able to double amount of land and they were able to buy the land at a very cheap price. It was only around 70 cents per acre and to put that into perspective one acre of land in LA in our times is around $39,000. So the Louisiana purchase was very very beneficial to America. However, it would prove to be very detrimental to the Native Americans that lived on that land. In 1830, America started to enforce the Indian Removal Act. So all the Native Americans were forced to move 5,000 miles to reservations in Oklahoma in order to make way for slave plantations in cities. This was also known as a Trail of Tears because around 4,000 Native Americans died during this. In the Great Plains, there were many Native Americans that tried to resist this expansion, and the government dealt with them by trying to destroy their livelihood. So during this time, there were many bison in the Great Plains, and the Native Americans would hunt these bison and use them for food, clothing, and shelter. So the government wanted to kill all these bison, and they killed so many that the bison almost went extinct. It went from 40 million bison before this to around 400 bison. And the reason they did this was to make it so that the Native Americans were no longer independent and they would have to be forced to comply with the government's demands, which was to move to farming and to assimilate to American culture. Now, you may be asking yourselves, why did America do this? Why did they take so much land and why did they resort to killing all the bulls? The answer to this question lies in the difference in how Americans and Native Americans view the land. The Native Americans view nature and land as sacred. They wanted to protect it. So the relationship was one of cooperation. However, the Americans saw the land as a way to get wealthy. They only saw it as a resource. So that relationship was only one of taking. And we could see this difference in how they treated nature. Um, for example, in the buffalo, the Native Americans would only hunt what they needed and they would use the whole buffalo. So they would use the meat for food, the hide for clothing, and the bones for tools. However, the Americans would only use the hide, and that's why they killed so many buffalo. One of the reasons. And they would just sell the hide and leave the rest of the carcass to waste. 
Still, as we can see by the great advancements in technology today, the perspective that land is a resource has brought many practical innovations, such as the cell phone, the car, and medicine. Taking advantage of nature, even though it would cause harm, was a necessary evil for these advancements to take place. And if you were to look at it from the Americans' perspective, the natives were living very primitively before this. And if the Americans hadn't introduced this industrialization, they probably would have stayed primitive for a while. The question is, is it still right to use the land in a way that would harm it? To answer that question, let's look at what the Bible has to say. In Genesis 1.28, it says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Genesis 2.15 says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to tend it and to keep it. When man was created, the first command God gave to him was to take care of his creation. God wanted us to take care of nature while he was gone. So we should take care of it rather than take advantage of it. And as you guys know, we're starting to see the results of only treating nature as a resource. For example, things like global warming, pollution, air quality. These are all results of us not properly taking care of nature. And as for the riches and money the resources of nature provide, 1 Timothy 6.10 says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So here, Timothy is telling us that for us Christians who become too focused on money, it could lead us to lose our faith. And just so you guys know, the majority of Americans during this time were Protestants. So it wasn't like they were doing this out of ignorance. The love of money corrupted them and led them to take advantage of nature and harm the Native Americans. Now, I will go over the discrimination against the African Americans. I'm not sure a lot of this information is already well known, but I will just remind you of some of the details. Alright, so let's go back to the end of the Civil War. The North has just won, and slavery is now illegal. So Congress had just passed three amendments. The 13th Amendment made slavery illegal. The 14th Amendment made it so that everyone, no matter their race, was equally protected under the law. And the 15th one made it so that African Americans had the right to vote. Before the Southern states were allowed to come back to the Union, they had to do two things. The first one was accept the 14th Amendment, was that everyone had to be equal, equally protected under the law. And two, they had to guarantee the African Americans the right to vote. Still, these amendments did not guarantee that the African Americans would be treated equally legally or socially. There were many Southerners that still believed that African Americans were inferior, and they formed a group called the KKK in order to promote segregation and keep African Americans from voting. In the South, there were loopholes in the 14th and 15th Amendments called Jim Crow Laws. These made it so that some African Americans wouldn't be able to vote, and it would also promote the segregation between the African Americans and the whites. Poll tax made it so that in order to vote, citizens had to pay a tax, which was around one or two dollars. However, because many African Americans during this time were poor, many of them couldn't afford to vote. There were also laws that required voters to pass a literacy test in order to vote. However, many African Americans were just denied the education needed in order to pass these tests because of their race. The Supreme Court was forced to address one of the Jim Crow laws during Plessy versus Ferguson. They said that segregational laws were constitutional because both races were treated separately but equally, which as we know is not true. And the issue of Jim Crow laws and Africans not being treated equally under law, the law had to be addressed in a later time during the civil rights movement of the 1960s. So, what can we learn from this? What is the reason those amendments didn't work? Well, it's the same reason that many tyrannical regimes don't last long. It's also the same reason why we can't force people to love Christ. Those laws didn't work because the Southerners weren't intent on keeping them. The reason African Americans weren't treated equally was because 
the Southerners in their hearts did not believe that they were equal. Knowing this fact can give us Christians some insight on how we should go about spreading the word of God and making a positive impact in our society. In The Desire of Ages, page 509, Ellen G. White pointed out that even though the government during Jesus' time was very corrupt, Jesus didn't spend his time on earth trying to fix the institutions. Instead, what he did do was individually try to reach out to people and fix their hearts. As we have seen in the case of racial discrimination, laws and amendments are not effective in making people good. We should follow Jesus' example and personally reach out to people in order to change hearts and make a positive effect on our society. Before I end this video, I want to restress one more point. Just because we're Christian does not mean we don't have any prejudice. It doesn't mean that this message doesn't apply to us. Many Christians had justified taking land away from the natives would manifest destiny, that it was God's will that the natives would be conquered. So in order for us to learn from this message, in order for us to learn from history, we need to have an open mind. We can't just say, oh, I'm Christian, so that means I'm not racist. This message is for someone else. So I encourage you to really think about this, pray about it, see what you can improve, and reach out to other people. Thank you for watching, and I hope you stay blessed.